All right, welcome back, guys. Now, there can be certain times when we wish we could tell someone what they were doing was not very appropriate, like flossing when they're uh, your cubicle mate at work. That's kind of Okay, that's just gross. <laughs> okay, what about the cell phone talker in the bathroom? I know you've experienced that. Well, author Rosalinda Randall has written the book Don't Burp in the Boardroom, your guide to handling uncommonly common workplace dilemmas. Rosalinda, thank you so much for being here this morning. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be in Arizona. Well, I, we definitely need some tips today because, listen, the people I work with. Oh, I'm just kidding. He's wonderful. Burn. But first, let's talk a little bit briefly about you and what you do. I'm an etiquette and civility expert, and what I do is get called by companies who might be having a little issue with, you know, hygiene. Recently, it's been a, a couple of companies have called me in because of poor dressing, attire, and uh, hygiene problems. Um, so I go in and I cover all kinds of things, but you know, kind of focus on that to um, support HR policies. Um, that's what I go into in colleges. I was at Pima College. Hi, Pima College. Um, uh, doing a presentation for them as well on you know interviewing skills and just just how to be more civil in the workplace. Yes, and I think part of being more civil is approaching situations with tact and being you know being able to say something without offending somebody but yes. still giving them that feedback and sort of realigning them. Yes. So how does someone even become an you know an etiquette expert? I mean, what steps do you have to go through to gain all that knowledge? Well, research and talking to people and getting a lot of information when I'm out there. <laughs> actually, yeah, I have a lot of blog information when I'm out in the world. But actually, you can go to several institutes and go for three or four days and pay, you know, a few thousand dollars, and they send you home with a packet, and you can say you're an etiquette expert. I think that's so great. And <laughs> Rosalinda, you're so good at it that you now have a book, in fact, Don't Burp in the Boardroom, which has tons of tips for dealing with those uncomfortable and awkward situations at work. Yes. So let's talk about a few of them. As we mentioned, one, uh, your cubicle mate may be flossing their teeth right next to you. Now, yes. I think that is totally disgusting. <laughs> what would you do in a situation like that? Well, that actually happened, and that's why it's in a book. Someone said, what do I do? Uh, and really, there's not much you can do other than turn your chair, because you never know where that's going to fly out. You know, if someone's, <laughs> and actually, that's what happened with them, as it says in the book, they were flossing and, you know, after lunch talking, and it flew out. But really, what you can just say is, you know, I have a sensitive stomach, or, you know, I'd rather not, not see that, or would you mind? You know, sometimes just being honest and saying, you know, would you mind taking care of that now that we're sharing an office? And why don't you tell me what bothers you? You know, sort of give them an opening to maybe share back and forth. Well, they picked it and inflicted. it. That's pretty gross. I mean, <laughs> the, the point of a working really I made her gross yeah. out. The point of a working relationship, I think, is like any other relationship. Right? Yes. You have to build that, that friendship, that, you know, the workplace as being able to give feedback to each other. Yes, but also maintain a little bit of, I don't want to use the word formality, but professionalism because there, you know, you can get so comfortable with one another, but not, shouldn't, shouldn't, I don't like using that word, but shouldn't be as comfortable as you would, you know, with uh, someone that you live with at home. There still should be a little boundary between it, like flossing, um, you know, or brushing your teeth or anything like that, you know, making adjustments. That makes sense. And, and, and the same goes for the other person is being kind of receptive to that you know, other people's feelings yes. and, and maybe not being so defensive because I know that can oftentimes be a problem in the office. So, okay, I think we've all been there too where we've walked in the bathroom, we go into the stall and we hear next to us, in the stall next to us, somebody having a fight with their boyfriend on the phone yes. or something like that. I mean, what can you even do in a situation like that? Nothing. What can you do? Some people, and it's kind of rude, find that jumping in on the conversation, yeah, you were right, you know, just being a part of it since you're exposing it to the public why why can't I jump in on the conversation? But you wouldn't. You would just get in and get out and leave and just pretend you didn't hear anything. No. Not go out and spread the word. Okay. Guess what I heard. And I think th one of the biggies is what if you become attracted to somebody in the workplace? How do you even approach that? I mean, I would assume you would just wouldn't do anything. I know Alex needs to know this because, I mean, look at who he's working with. We just oh, That's right. I'm That's working true. with some beautiful women. You never know. Yeah. Well, first check your HR manual. A yes. lot of policies, you know, s state that you cannot enter in a romantic relationship or once you do that you should report it. You need to report it, especially if it's a subordinate and manager relationship. Sometimes those are forbidden. Uh, and the only thing about that, because you spend a lot of time in the workplace with someone and that can happen, but 
just being aware of a few things that you know you don't sit in your desk or at meetings sending love texts to each other and not paying attention to the presenter you know little things like that that you should watch out for right it can't yeah. interfere with you know the everyday business no it shouldn't and you know i was i was sitting last night reading your book and I was just, I was drawn to it instantly because oh, it you. takes a very real approach to a lot of things that people may not think about every day. I found myself gauging things, you know, do I do these things? Do I not do these things? Which ones <laughs> do, can I do better? And I think that's the main point of the book is to make us better people. Yes, and I also don't give you, you know, hard rules. It's options because everyone's different. Every situation is different. And as you said, just being considerate and gauging the other person, you know, your coworker. If you see them cringe, just be aware. I think really being aware of how something landed with someone, then that gives you the feedback that you need and then just don't do it again. Absolutely. Rosalinda, mm -hmm. this was awesome. We oh, really appreciate you. you coming on and sharing your book and your work with us. Thank you. I Come appreciate back anytime. it. Thank you. And you can get a, a copy of her book, of your book signed by Rosalinda herself at Barnes & Noble East tomorrow from 1 to 4 p.m. For more information, you can log on to rosalindarandall.com. Find her on Twitter by following at Rosalinda Tweets and by calling 650-871-6200.